All right. So I'll be present. I'll, I'll just kick this off. So we're team seven. Encyclopedia is the name of our project. Um, my name is Bradley Hollis. And um, like most others in this cohort, I am new to the development world. Um, I graduated from Ohio University with two degrees, one in management information systems and the other in business analytics. And I'm Adam Kerr. I'm also uh, brand new to the um, development world. I graduated from uh, SUNY University at Albany with a degree in political science and legal philosophy. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, Bradley, let's jump right into it. Encyclopedia, guys. <laughs> Okay, so for the intro, um, as Adam said, like when we were coming up with an idea, we were thinking, okay, can we just do like a a, a use like a like a service based application or with like customers and so forth? And we thought, yeah, that would be great, but we thought it'd be way cooler if we did like a chicken app. <laughs> um, we we both come from agricultural backgrounds, and we both really appreciate like the farm life, and so we could really connect on this project and really. Uh, and move forward with it. Um, at first, the idea was simple, but we knew that it was open to experimentation. So it, it was really cool to start from the beginning and it was nice to follow through in the end. Um, disclaimer, chickens are very cute. They are not objects. Well, in this case, they technically are objects, but we'll leave the chicken crud up to the farmers. Um, I'll let Adam explain that in just a sec. Yeah, so um, the chicken model is really the backbone of how this app operates. So what you can see on the screen right now is basically everything we could come up with that would data ties a chicken. I, I, I picked up one of my chickens and I looked at her and I said, all right, what field variables you got for me, honey? And um, I just basically looked that bird over and came up with everything that you could basically use to describe this bird. So um, for those of you who might not be um, up on the chicken lingo, I know we have a lot of more urban people in here. Um, so just a few you might not be familiar with, a comb, that's the red fleshy growth on a chicken's head. Also a brooder um, for the parental uh, IDs we have right here. So father, mother, brooder. A brooder is the hen that actually sits on the eggs. A chicken will always sit on the egg that it lays and vice versa. So just for some clarification right there. So the learning goal for our app was if we're talking about our chickens, we got to upload photos of our chickens. They're very cute and we want the world to see them. So we have a, um, we have a upload feature on our site that allows us to create a profile for each individual chicken. And with each individual chicken profile, we get a profile picture. So you can show off those great chicken photos you got, those chick pics. So um, by default, every chicken has a default profile picture, you know, akin to your uh, default creation uh, profile picture on like a Facebook or a MySpace account. And um, you are then able to go into the chicken's profile and set one manually. Just a, just a brief overview of what we just talked about before we actually go into our application. Um, Adam and I just really wanted to create an application where we can showcase chick, uh, chickens on our farm. This is for the chickens. Um, we want to bring it to the people. Um, and yeah, we, we have some cool features uh, along the way. So um, enough of that said, let's go ahead and see our working application. I'll stop sharing and Adam will share his screen. All right, so here we are at our homepage. You can see that we wanted to go for a very uh, rustic sort of a farmer's almanac look. And I'll actually uh, let Bradley uh, take it away talking about some of the stylings we used. Yeah, I, I got a little a carried away work. with some some of the styles, <laughs> and I, I'm glad towards the end of our cohort we were able to actually start using CSS and all all, all that it has to offer. Um, I, I wanted to go with the tan background just because. Well, and this might be a little selfish, but when I conceptualize a chicken, I think of like the darker feathers, and so and, and it also kind of goes with the farm theme. So I thought, why not? Why not use a tan background? And also, like, wanted to display like a little favicon of a, of a hen sitting on her eggs. Um, there, there are more varying egg colors than what they show there, but just want to show that like, you know, every, most chickens are different. Um, and we'll talk about that more with like predicted chick and like how chickens can, how chickens vary based off of like, you know, genotypes and stuff. Uh, anyway, this is our chickens, um, like landing page. So when you come to the site, the, it, it's open to the public, as we said, and every chicken has their own card with the, with their image uploaded to it. So um, when a farmer adds a chicken to a farm, um, there's an option to set the profile picture as well as other information as well. So you have some uh, attributes here 
maybe some that you that you're familiar with others that like I had to learn when I started this project. I didn't know what a brooder was. Um, I certainly didn't know what a comb type was, but it's all there and it, it's fun to learn. Also, the, the card types are, are varying colors and it, it does depend on the, you know, the gender of the chicken. So um, roosters, they get blue, hens, they get pink and the juveniles get yellow. So we wanted to show that variety. It's not too, um, too much coloring. It's just three simple colors. And I think it looks nice with the, with the tan background. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's what you'd see if you came to the farm. Um, good learning opportunity for anybody who, who likes chicks. <laughs> So speaking about uh, learning about chicks and the way chickens work is I did a little bit of skimming of a thesis on a chicken on the chicken genome and how their genetics work. And um, I was able to actually patch together a calculator that allows you to figure out what color egg and what feather types your birds will have if you breed two birds with certain attributes. So just for a demonstration here, we'll say we have a soft feathered bird and a silky feathered bird. Let's uh. Let's grab a brown egg chicken and let's grab something adventurous. We'll grab a blue egg chicken. And if we predict the chick, we'll see that they will have green eggs. We're having a little bit of a bug here with the feather tights, but if we try again, you see um, it does work with, uh, it'll predict the type of feathers and it'll predict the type of egg. So I, I that was, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the app. I spent a, this is one of our stretch goals. So I spent a little bit of the last few days we had patching this together, making sure it worked well. So now we'll step over onto our login. We'll see what the farmer sees. You are now the chicken manager, the chicken tender, if you will. And as we log in, we get redirected back to our homepage and we'll return to our chicken pages. You see, not much has changed. However, you will now have the option to edit chickens and we have more links up here at the top. So firstly, the one main thing that the farmhand has access to is allowing us to manage flocks. Now the managing flocks was a part of an initial stretch goal that if we had another week or so to implement, this would allow us to actually sort our chickens. So right now, this is just back end and allows us to uh, just keep them organized in the SQL database where this supports full CRUD operation. So if we wanted to create a new flock, we could make them layers. We can submit that. We could rename an existing flock. So we'll name these guys the silkies. And as you see, we can rename them to the silkies, you know, fix that capitalization in there from the development. And of course we can delete unnecessary flocks, no issue. Now over here, we can get into the meat and potatoes of the app and we can actually create a profile for a chicken. So let's name this chicken, uh, we'll name it test. Feather color, you know, it's test colored. Feather type, we'll say it's a soft feather bird. Eggs, we'll, we'll get adventurous, it lays a pink egg. Comb type, single comb, that's the most common type of comb for a chicken. Well, let's say this is an adult chicken. So we'll put him back a few months. He's grown up. His breed, I don't know yet. This is a brand new chicken. His father, we can make it Norbert mother Norberta, and I think Norberta would sit on her own egg. So her brooder can also be Norberta. Let's make it a boy chicken. We'll apply him to the silkies and we'll add this chicken. And the chicken was indeed created. So here we have our default profile of a chicken. But you know, this isn't really very descriptive. We don't know anything about this chicken. So let's go in and edit. So let's name this chicken. Let's rename the chicken to pretty boy. And as you can see up here, it actually edits the uh, title of the chicken, the title of the page as we do it. We really liked that. His color, you know, I think he's a speckled bird. So he's salt. Other type still soft. As it turns out, his egg color is actually brown. Single comb still fine. His breed though, now we know he is a Dominique. And we'll ignore the obvious logic issue of two silkies giving birth to a uh, Dominique. We'll not worry about that, but uh, <laughs> um, for the sake of demonstration, we'll leave his parents the same and um, we'll leave him as male. His flock can still be silkies. And now we'll upload our profile picture. So we'll scroll through all of our lovely chicken photos and find one that here he is right here. There's pretty boy. We'll update our chicken. So now the site will take a moment um, to upload the image to AWS. It 
there's a little bit of a delay just due to the fact that we're not doing this um, locally. It's being stored on our remote server. So there we go. There's Pretty Boy in all of his glory. But you know, what? maybe Pretty Boy doesn't actually exist, or I just wanted to start over. So if that's the case, unfortunately, we had to include the option to delete a check-in. So sorry, Pretty Boy. You're a pretty bird, but you have to go. And as you can see, Pretty Boy's gone. No issues. So lastly, I just wanted to show um, one of my favorite pieces here. And I just want, and this demonstrates, you know, we're thinking about little things here. If we put in some gibberish URL, we will get redirected to our custom 404 page. So with all that out of the way, I'd like to hand it back over to Tara and uh, see if there are any questions. I had no idea there could possibly be so many chicken coding puns. I was thoroughly enjoying <laughs> Uh, this this presentation. And uh, I live in South Minneapolis where um, people are actually raised chickens in their backyard. I feel like there is a urban and rural use for this application. And it was just fun to watch, interesting. Um, I The volume I've just learned about chickens in this short period of time also far exceeds anything <laughs> I could have anticipated. So that was that was fantastic. And beyond the fun part of it, you guys built a gorgeous, really, really cool, very functional application. I'm, I'm just really incredibly impressed. So I, I want to put that out there. Um, I, I think everyone else had some fun here with you. So Jacob wants to know, how does the calculator work and what technologies does it use? And actually, the calculator is um, completely done in front-end JavaScript. There's nothing special in it. So um, I'll explain just a little bit how that works. Um, and it kind of has to do with how the chicken ge genetics works. So I don't want to like give you guys a thesis on how the chickens work. But um, every, egg, every egg has um, it's either blue or white-based. The blue egg trait is a dominant trait. White eggs are actually recessive. So if one of the parents is blue, then any offspring will have that blue egg trait. Now, chickens also have a secondary pigment, the brown color, see. So what I did is I assigned each um, parental egg color a score on a basis of one to zero, one, zero to three, zero being a white egg or blue egg if it has a blue egg trait, um, and uh, three being like the darkest brown, most chocolate egg you can get. So what we do is we check to see if it's a blue egg, then we take the average of the two brown egg scores, and that will determine what the color of the egg is. Interesting. That that was a really cool feature to be able to throw on there at the end. Um, talk to me. You guys achieved a lot. So last week or two weeks ago, you started your planning session. How did you guys divide your tasks to ensure that you were able to get to this point? It sounds like you maybe even had a little little more time at the end than you'd anticipated. Yeah, I'll take that one on. So um, so I know like most people from talking to most people in the cohort, like everybody kind of has their own building methodology. Um, I kind of like to start from the back end because that's where I'm most comfortable. Um, so I will, with a little help from Adam, I did create the schema and the tables and stuff. And um, I did the repository, but Adam met me um, still in the back end with the service. And he was very good with the service. And we kind of moved all, like, you know, hand for fist up the, up the chain there. Um, and then we kind of ended with, uh, the front end. So we started, yeah, like, like we said, like, um, start with the back end, then move all the way up to the front. Yeah. If I could just, um, add on to that, really the methodology was, um, working in such a way that we can meet each other in the middle with as few conflicts as possible. So things that were uh, core, like the chicken model, we were like, okay, we have to sit down and make sure we're working on the same chicken model. Um, same with the, uh, with the flocks, things like that. And then once that's spread up, we, uh, you know, I start working from the controllers down. He starts working from the database up and we meet in the middle and we work kind of similarly for the front end. As well. Excellent. Really, really well done. If you could go back and do anything differently, would there be anything you, you know, change as it relates to either the technology or the approach that you guys took? Good question. Um, I thought one of the things that we did really well is that we were very realistic about our application. We didn't bite off more than we could chew. Um, again, it was a very simple idea. We built off of it. 
Um, I really wish we could have, if we had maybe a day or two extra, I would really like to add like a, uh, like a medical document section for the chickens, because mm -hmm. ultimately part of our idea was to have it be more so a, a, a place where farmers can like manage their chickens and vets could be, have like their own login. Um, but we're a two person team and I, I thought we worked very well, very methodical. Um, we did run into some speed bumps, but again, I thought we didn't, I thought we did everything within scope and I thought, and everything was within reason. But if, again, if we had more time, I think we would have a lot of fun adding some more features. Yeah. Um, and if I could just, uh, put my two cents in on that as well. Um, I was, uh, <laughs> I was, um, surprised at how difficult, um, and how many pain points we uh, ran into with the image upload. Um, and even, uh, Right now, we still have some challenges with it that fortunately it managed to uh, cooperate. So I would uh, really love to put a little bit more attention on to making sure that uh, image upload is as, um, you know, solid as it can be. Because right now um, with the uh, small AWS server we're running on, we're working in the free tier, um, it's very easy to uh, overload our server and uh, cause some problems with the size of the, uh, you know, the skilled chicken photography images might be so um yeah and that actually draws back to um i think it was um speedy law i asked a question about um their image upload i was curious what they did because we hit a lot of those pain points too so yeah so i'm curious i was actually going to ask you that you know how, how did you solve for your image upload issue and, and where did you end up you know storing those images uh it's actually very similar to what the previous group had talked about we have them stored on our um remote api so there's a folder inside of our api called chicken dash images that we had to uh go through uh many trials and tribulations to get it to actually show up on aws and i'm i'm sure david can attest to that um this app was certainly made possible by him so i'd like to give him a shout out i also like to give uh, dex a shout out for making a great uh fave icon for us it was, i know it's a little hard to see um, through the screen share, but I'd like to shout out to Dex for that as well. It was very kind of him. I love it. Well, that was a very, very fun application. I found myself laughing and also being educated and intrigued throughout the entire thing. So very well done. Congratulations, you guys. I, you. Now, I now feel like I could use your app and possibly own a chicken. Won't happen, but you know. <laughs> Fantastic job. Well, you guys, you killed it. So thank you very much.